Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah some like, clubs look, out there that, that have like a hundred players of a certain age group. Sure, like Nisha, you're a coach in Dublin as well. Like there are plenty of clubs there that like let's say the 2013 group or whatever, they might have a hundred kids, but you're not necessarily going to get a few senior stars out of that, Nisha. No, exactly. So this is the thing: is again doing it in the right way, kind of the way Crokes have seemed to do it with, with bringing in the young lads and all that. You have, they have to be coached in the right way. They have to be taught and you know let allowed to express themselves in the right way and nurtured in the right way because it doesn't just happen. Um, and like super clubs, like you know, p- people are kind of saying like I know this came up as well on TG Carr the time of the the Bally Hale, the, the Shamrocks County final there. And you're kind of going, well, technically, would the Shamrocks be classed as a super club, seeing as they're an amalgamation? And in 50 years, they've won 20, what is it, 20 titles, you know. But again, people say, ah, they're only a little tiny towns. Yeah, yeah, Ballyhale is a small little place, but the parish itself is bigger and what they take in is bigger. Also, obviously, look, it's not comparable to Cool or Crokes' numbers, right? But the thing is, right, the plan in Dublin, and rightly so, was to get as many children from all walks of life playing hurling football boys and girls, as much as possible, right? And it worked, and it is working. And isn't it better that we are that we have them playing our games? Hey, hey, nice tag for the show there. That we have them playing our games rather than, you know, being a part of playing soccer and rugby that we were kind of traditionally losing them to in Dublin, that they're in the GA clubs. And that, yes, like the lads were saying as well, Tomás O'Flaherty said this, yes, it would be ideal if, you know, you could divide up all the, divide up the massive clubs and have, a club in each parish in Dublin or each town in Dublin, but the reality is there's no room. Like, there's no fields, there's no green areas for us to do it. Like, how many times, Shane, we're getting ready for championship and we're at the top field in Bray and, and Crokes are at the front, you know, so the two of us are in the same club grounds training, which is in a different county and, uh, you know, this is where our senior teams have to train. You know, like, I mean, I've, I've said a million times as well now to lads that be asking me about it, uh, I've been hurling with Coola since 2015 and I've trained in Hyde Park once. Um, like, and it's just the reality. Like The underage teams, they're, they're scattered all... Like, when they're training or playing matches, they're scattered all around South County Dublin. Like, so, you know, th- there, there are advantages, but there are, there are disadvantages as well. It's like anything, right? Ideally, you could have a club in Blackrock, a club in Stalorgan, a club in Dockey, a club in Killiney, but it's just, it just doesn't happen. just can't. It's just not... Physically possible. Just on this point here, so Marcus Lynch asks, where are all these good Dublin players come senior into county championship? Dublin hurling is a crushing disappointment. Now, something that you said there, Nisha, and I think uh, Dublin hurling probably needs to go to the next level in this regard. I think the numbers are good, and it comes back to a lot of the quality of coaching, uh, both at, you know, employed people that are going out, including yourself, Nisha, and all club officials and club coaches. Now the quality needs to push. You have the numbers. Now everything, the quality needs to be pushed. The quality of player, are they all doing the right things are, to get the, the quality up? That's kind of the next step, I suppose. Yeah, and like, so this is the thing with like, so say yesterday, even involved in the county final yesterday, right? So I'm, I suppose I wasn't involved, but I'm co-commentating, right? So I'm uh, games development officer. Thomas Gleeson was ref and he's a games development officer. Niall Corcoran's on the bench there for Pro. He's a games development officer. And we'd be predominantly hurling people, obviously, right? Because there's always going to be football people in Dublin and, and people that know far more about the technical skills of football than I do, right? But this is where the workshops come in. Like, one massive thing, right? I, I always, always come back to this. Well, sorry, two things, right? Is the hand-passing ability, right? And I've done plenty of workshops on this stuff. The, the hand-eye coordination stuff, the skills, the correct grip, the which hand to use when you're passing certain directions, all this kind of stuff. But also, the, I think that the striking, um, is a big one that um, underage, I suppose, in Kilkenny growing up, right, you were kind of forced, depending on where you're from, you were probably forced to play two or three years above your age grade. Sometimes I had to play five or six and uh, because we could only talk out 15 lads, things like this, right? So you had to be able to hit the ball, but you were getting exposed to a size five slitter at a far younger age than lads would say in Dublin are now because the numbers are so big. You're in goal games and you only play with your own age group, which in one way is great, but in another way, as far as, I, I, I always see striking uh, as, a, as a big one where, you know, me and my friends, like all we used to do when we were growing up was play hurling, 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 right? We'd practice and freeze, practice and sidelines, practice and all this kind of stuff, right? We'd be messing around because we had so much free time, right? And we were scoring 65s at 12, 13 years of age, whereas a lot of the underage games I go to now, you're probably nearly looking at lads up until under 16 still, some lads can't do it, and you're going, you know, there's a lot of... Obviously, there's strength involved in it, but there's a lot of technical stuff involved in getting distance on your strike and all. So this is the kind of stuff 
to make, you know, this is the kind of stuff where we're falling behind, I think, right? Um, it's the, the striking ability, right? And then the, 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 the just the, the real kind of high level skills, the, the quickness of hand, the kind of that kind of stuff. And hopefully it'll come, right? Because there are so many good hurling people in Dublin, like, like so many, but the, the, the draw still is similar, I suppose, to, you know, it's the opposite to say, look, I've experienced playing in Derry and experienced playing in Kilkenny, right? Where it's the opposite where the, the big draw in Derry is the football. No matter how good you are at hurling, if you're good at football, you're going to go to the football. Kilkenny, you know, we all played football. I mean, there's three divisions in underage football in Kilkenny, believe it or not. Uh, I played football till I was 17. And then you just kind of, when you're in with the Kilkenny minors, I suppose, you're kind of going, well, look, it's a hurling I'm going to be playing. Like, right, yes, right, I'll play football if they want me to play with the club, but probably not, right? Because that's the draw. That's where it is. And then Dublin is the same. I mean, some of the best, some of the best hurlers in football, or sorry, some of the best hurlers in Dublin, in club hurling in Dublin, just happen to be some of the best footballers as well. And the draw is, right, I'm going to go to Jim Gavin's team at the time and we'll say, and I'm going to play football and I'm going to have a chance to win all Ireland. Right? That just is it. Look, you know, people like, people like Conor McHugh, you know, obviously, Con, Dermot Connolly, Kieran Kilkenny. Um, Eric Lowndes. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting a couple. Johnny now, Cooper. Off. There you Carmen go. Costler. Yeah, sorry, Johnny Cooper. Yeah, yeah. Carmen Costler. There you go. Look, no county would survive without losing them at Hurling anyway, right? So if you mix all them lads in, they'd have been all in at the same age and at the same crop along with, remember when Daly had the good team as well, obviously, except for Con and Kieran, Kenny would have been a bit younger. But add them lads onto that team that was developing all the time, you'd have had a, you'd had a serious team. But they're still getting to Leinster finals, apart from obviously last year, right? But they're still, it's just, they're, I, they're probably just missing that bit of class, the bit of danger, the bit of quality, the bit of imagination, probably, right? Because there are plenty of great defenders. Uh, Owen O'Donnell is as good a defender as you're going to get. Keno Callahan as well. 